Hare Krishna. Welcome to Iskand of Silicon Valley and the auspicious occasion of Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur's Disappearance Day. Welcoming His Grace Satyadev Prabhu, Mahaguna. Thank you very much for coming. Tonight we'll begin with the song Ohe Vaishnava Thakur by Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur. Ohe Vaishnava Thakura Doyara Sagara Edase Karuna Kori Kura Doyara Sagara Edase Karuna Kori Ohe Vaishnava Thakura Doyara Sagara Ida Se Karuna Kori Ohe Dia Pada Chaya Shorohe Amaya Tomara Charana Dhori Dia pada chaya, sholo he amaya, tomara charana dori. Chaya bega domi, chaya dosha shodhi, chaya guna de hodase. Mega Domi Chaya Bega Domi Chaya Tosha Shodhi Chaya Guna Deho Dase Chaya Shat Sangha Deho He Amare Bosha Chi Sangha Rashe Chaya Shat Sangha Deho he amare boshe chi shange rashe Eka ki amar nahi pae bolo hari nama sankirtane Eka ki ama nahi pae balo hari nama sankirtane Tumi kripa kore shadha bindu diya deho krishna nama dhane Tumi kripa kore shadha bindu diya deho krishna nama dhane Krishna se toma krishna jite paro tomara shakti ache Krishna se to ma, Krishna di te paro, to marasha koti ache. (laughs) 
Amito Kanga Krishna Krishna Boli Daitava Pache Pache Amito Kanga Krishna Krishna Boli Daitava Pache Pache Oh hey Vaishnava Thakku Doyara Sagaro Idase Koruna Kori Oh hey Jaya Vaishnav Thakur, Vaishnav Thakur, Vaishnav Thakur, Jaya Vaishnav Thakur. Jaya Bhakti Vinod, Bhakti Vinod, Bhakti Vinod, Jaya Bhakti Vinod. Welcome to the Dis- Shula, Divine Disappearance Day of Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur here at ISV. This verse expresses the mood of service to the Guru, to the Vaishnav. The translation goes as follows. O Venerable Vaishnav Thakur, O Ocean of Mercy, be merciful to the servant of yours and purify me with the shade of your lotus feet. Your lotus feet I humbly hold. By helping me control the six urges and purifying me the six faults, bestow upon your servant the six good qualities. O Master, please give me the six kinds of holy association. I have sat down here hoping to have your company. Alone, I do not find the strength to chant the holy name of Hari. Please be merciful and blessing me with a drop of faith. Bestow upon me the great treasure of the holy name of Krishna. Krishna is yours, and you can give him to me, for such is your power. This wretch is simply running behind you, crying out, Krishna, Krishna. So, on this special day of Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur's disappearance, we're also running behind Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur by running behind our... Guru Varga, uh, following in the footsteps of Srila Prabhupada, who perfectly exemplified the mood of Srila Bhaktivedanta Thakur. And that mood is expressed in his writings. He wrote over a hundred books, which is superhuman. Who can write a hundred books and at the same time maintain a career at a very high level? His career was as a um, legal expert a high court judge, and he was famous for his expertise in, in that judicial work. Not only that, he had 10 kids, and he um, wrote 100 books, with the speak of thousands of poems. So it's inconceivable, the, the power of uh, Bhaktivinoda Minot Thakur, uh, and every one of his, his poems is so perfectly placed. It gives uh, an instruction to show us how to either move forward in the basic aspects of devotional service all the way to the most advanced. So as an example, in his Sharanagati, he writes about the limb of surrender in Sharanagati, as Sharanagati is the six limbs of taking shelter of the Supreme. So one of those is in cultivating humility. And here is his writing. When we first started reading this Jaranagati at our home about 20 years ago with a group of devotees, everybody said, uh, I want a copy of this. For some reason, hearing the words of Bhakti Minotakur, especially in his great humility, expressing what humility actually sounds like, 
Devotees were compelled and they, they wanted to hear more of it. There's something very sweet about that. And so I called up the translator of this particular book and said, you know, we need a couple of cases. The devotees here are interested in reading. And he said, sorry, out of print. If you want the book, you'll have to reprint it. So it's, the devotees were so enthusiastic, they took up a collection and uh, gave the money, several thousand dollars, for him to reprint the book. And um, then we got several cases of them, and we all had a big celebration reading this book again and again. So in the beginning, uh, Bhaktivinoda Thakur, in the first anga of surrender to the Lord, uh, talks about uh, dainya, or humility. And in a famous song, the Prabhupada would sing, called Amara Jivana, uh, he writes as follows, My life is ever given to sin. In it there is not a particle of good. I have caused others great anxiety and have troubled all souls. For the sake of my own enjoyment, I have never hesitated to perform sinful acts. Devoid of all compassion, I am concerned only with my selfish interests. Perpetually speaking lies, I become dejected upon seeing others happy, whereas the misery of others is a source of great delight for me. There are limitless material desires within the core of my heart. I am wrathful, fond of exhibiting arrogance, intoxicated by vanity, and bewildered by worldly affairs. I wear the cherished ornaments of envy and egotism. Ruined by laziness and sleep, I resist all pious deeds, yet I am very enthusiastic to perform wicked acts. For the sake of worldly fame and reputation, I engage in the practice of deceitfulness. I am victimized by my own greed, being always lustful. A vile, wicked man such as this, rejected by godly people, is a constant offender, devoid of all good works, forever inclined toward evil. He is worn out and wasted by various miseries. Now in old age, deprived of all means of relief, this humble and poor Bhaktivinoda submits his tale of grief at the feet of the Supreme Lord. There's a kind of relishment that the great souls have in expressing their deep humility and a sense of them being fallen, even though we understand that they are <clears throat> eternally liberated souls. They come and they exhibit this uh, dainya, but they also uh, drink the nectar of that dainya for themselves. Because in considering oneself very lowly and fallen and f utterly dependent on the, on the Supreme Personality of God, the soul actually swims in a pond of happiness. And so this is the um, teaching of Bhaktivinoda Thakur. Uh, how eloquently and in so much detail does he express the feeling of being utterly humbled at the lotus feet of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, feeling oneself completely dependent. And throughout this book, he goes through the various limbs of, of surrender. Each one of the chapters of Sharanagati is dedicated to one of the aspects of the path. Of course, there's humility, and there's also accepting things that are favorable and rejecting things that are unfavorable. So, as an example, in the Sharanagati of accepting things that are favorable, Bhaktivinoda Thakur sings Ashuta Bhakata Chadarinu, which we'll sing next. And this a song is all about the various devotional practices, which are so full of joy and he practically lists them in this song as he goes through. So in the translation, he writes about, first, the, the dust of the lotus feet of pure devotees gives rise to devotional service, and service to the devotees is itself the supreme perfection of the root of the creeper of divine love. So the shuta pakata charana renu, so the renu is the dust of the lotus feet of the, of the Vaishnavas. And we heard about that with the Vaishnava Thakura. Then he says, With great care I observe holy days like Akadashi and Janmashtami, for they are the mother of devotion, and with the greatest reverence 
and love I choose as my dwelling place the transcendental abode of Sri Krishna. So this Akadashi and Janmashtami, these special days, Akadashi is known as Hari Vasara. It's the day of Lord Hari. You perform devotional acts on Akadashi and devotees who, who respect Akadashi look forward to the Akadashi day so they can be even more focused on their devotional practices. And then um, they're always considering um, in their minds and hearts the, 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 their residence within the Holy Dham of Vrindavan. He talks about visiting all the holy places where Lord uh, Gorasunda traveled, and he wants to hear the kirtan and the madanga. He, his heart dances when he hears it. And number five, he says that um, just by seeing the deities, he feels blissful. And by honoring the Lord's prasadam, he conquers over all the elements. Every day, Goloka Vrindavan appears in my home when I see Lord Hari being worshipped there. Just uh, yesterday, we went to Bali Mardan Prabhu's house. And there he has this beautiful altar. And then also, Gopal Krishna Maharaj had all his deities. I don't know how he travels with so many deities, but he had a huge um, altar set up with all his deities. And uh, the home is transformed into Goloka Vrindavan. You go into devotees' homes and it's, it's not ordinary. So all these things, Bhakti Thakur is exalting in, in these wonderful devotional activities. And this is one of the limbs of surrender, accepting all these things that are favorable to devotional service. Shud, we'll sing it together. Shudha Bhakata Chara Narenu Bhajana Anukula Bhakata Seva Paramasiri Premalati Karambula Madhava Titi Bhakti Janani Jatane Palana Kori Krishna Basati Basati Bodhi Parama Adare Bodhi Gora Ma Jesha Bastane Kolalo Brahmana Range Shesha Bastana Erebo Ami Prayani Bhakata Sange Mridanga Bhajya Shunati Mana Abhasara Sada Jache Gorvihita Kirtana Shuni Anandari Doya Nache Jugala Murti Deki Amora Parama Ananda Hoya Prasara Seva Kori Te Hoya Sakala Prapancha Joya Jedina Grihe Bhajana Deki Grihe Te Goloka Bhaya Charana Siddhu Deki Aganga Sukhana Sima Paya Deki Juraya Prana Marava Toshani Jani Gora Priya Shakshevane Jivana Sartakamani Bhakati Vinod Krishna Bhajane Anakula Paya Jaha Prate Dibase Paramasuki Svikara Koro Yetaha <coughs> So Bhaktivinoda Thakur wove into all his bhajans the practical tenets of bhakti. And he also wrote songs for which he said one should patrol around town. For instance, in the song Radha Krishna Bull, there are very simple instructions uh, it's written in Bengali, be singing in the towns of different Bengali towns, and people would hear the, the um, message, Miche Mayar Boshe Jacho Beshe Kasho Habudu Bubai. Just telling people that you're being sucked in by Maya and you're drowning here. And if you don't take to devotional service, then your life becomes useless. He says, 
become a servant of Krishna, Jeev Krishna Dase Bishwas. And then if you do that, uh, no more distress for you. And he sings, Krishna Bolbe Jabe Pulakahabe, Jorbe Anki Bolitai. So in this, yeah, which is consistent with all his other teachings, uh, because he's um, bringing together all the teachings of Lord Chaitanya in song and presenting it to the world so that people can hear it and sing it and remember this. He says that if you go on chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, then you'll come to the perfect stage of life. So he writes in details and in so many different songs about the power of chanting the holy names of the Lord. And here are two very esoteric songs written by Bhaktivinoda Thakur at the very end of his Sharanagati. Oftentimes, the last one that I'm going to read from is quoted by members of the Gaudiya Sampradaya to show that just by the Maha Mantra, just by chanting Hare Krishna, one can rise to the highest levels of bhakti. Everything that's necessary to advance in devotional service is there within the holy name. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. So this song appears as the penultimate song in the Sharanagati. And he writes, Please tell me, when or when will that day be mine? My offenses will come to an end, and a taste for the pure holy name will be infused within my heart by the power of divine grace. Did you hear that? Did you all hear it? You want to hear it again? This is very relevant to us because we're engaged in the, in the process following the footsteps of Bhaktivinoda Thakur. It's a very practical thing that we have a tradition. We also have these great acharyas or teachings who show by example how to organize one's life. Keep in mind, Bhaktivinoda Thakur is a grihasta. Even though he's a paramahamsa, he shows us how, my, how one might conduct one's life. And he gives these instructions again and again that give us faith in the practice of chanting the holy name of the Lord. So listen again. He says, please tell me when, oh when, will that day be not mine? This is the way that the devotees are constantly praying. When will I be allowed to chant the holy name without offenses? And if one is thinking and praying for this, as Satyadev Prabhu wrote me, read me a letter years ago about how Prabhupada said if if you desire to become pure, it's the same as purity. There's no difference. So win a win. My offenses will come to an end and a taste for the pure holy name will be infused within my heart by the power of divine grace. By what? Feeling myself lower than a bl blade of grass, welcoming the quality of forbearance into my heart, giving honor to all living beings and being freed from false pride. When will, when will I taste the essence of the liquid nectar of the holy name? Wealth, followers, beautiful women as described in worldly poetry, I do not want any such bodily pleasures. O oh Lord, go to Hari. Please give me unmotivated devotion to your lotus feet, birth after birth. When, while articulating the divine name of Sri Krishna, Will my body be thrilled in ecstatic rapture? My words choking with emotion, loss of color and ecstatic trembling occurring, and streams of tears flowing constantly from my eyes. When in the land of Navadvip, on the banks of the celestial Ganga, will I run about innocently calling out, O oh Gora, O oh Nityananda, Dancing and singing, I will wander about like a madman. <coughs> Please give me unmotivated devotion to your lotus feet, birth after birth. When in the land of Navadvip on the banks of Sushil Ganji, dancing and singing, I will wander about like a madman, giving up all consideration of proper social behavior. When will Lord Nityananda be merciful to me and release me from the illusion of worldliness? When will he give me the shade of his own lotus feet and bestow upon me 
the qualification necessary to enter the marketplace of the holy name. Somehow or other, I shall buy or steal the mellows of the name of Lord Huddy. Somehow or other, I shall buy or steal the mellows of the holy name of Lord Huddy. Becoming thoroughly intoxicated by those liquid mellows, I will be stunned by touching the feet of those great souls who are expert in relishing those mellows. I will be constantly immersed in the sweet nectar of the holy name. When will there be an awakening in me of compassion for all souls? Then this Bhaktivinoda will forget his own happiness. And with a meek heart, he will set out to propagate by humble solicitation the sacred order of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Krishna Shakti Vina Nahi Tava Pravatan. If one chants the holy name with this kind of enthusiasm, then one gets the power to spread Lord Chaitanya's mission. And here's perhaps the most profound of all bhajans. It's found at the last um, bhajan in this Sharanagati. And Bhaktivinoda Thakur again writes about the holy name. This is the conclusion of the Sharanagati where he speaks about how, one, how he achieves complete spiritual success uh, through the chanting of Hare Krishna. What power does the name of Krishna possess? My heart constantly burns in the fire of worldly desires, just like a desert scorched by the rays of the sun. The holy name entering the core of my heart through the holes of my ears showers unparalleled nectar upon my soul. What did you hear in that first uh, stanza? There's a bushel basket of microphones. Please use them. I'll read it again while you're searching them out. What power does the name of Krishna possess? One or a bushel basket? You got more than one? Should be at least 20 in there. What power does the name of Krishna possess? My heart constantly burns in the fire of worldly desires, just like a des desert scorched by the rays of the sun. The holy name entering the core of my heart through the holes of my ears showers unparalleled nectar upon my soul. The holy name speaks from within my heart, moves into the, onto the tip of my tongue, and constantly dances on it in the form of transcendental sound. Is it, we've converted to a gymnasium? Maybe mom's around somewhere? The holy name speaks from within my heart, moves onto the tip of my tongue, and constantly dances on it in the form of transcendental sound. My throat becomes choked up, my body shivers again and again, and my feet cannot remain still. Rivers of tears flow from my eyes, perspiration completely soaks my body. All my skin thrills with rapture, my hairs stand on end, and my complexion turns pale and discolored. My mind grows faint. I begin to experience devastation, and my entire body is shattered in a flood of ecstatic emotions. While causing such an ecstatic disturbance, the holy name showers liquid nectar on my heart and drowns me in the ocean of divine love of Godhead. He does not allow me to understand anything, for he has made me truly mad by having stolen away my mind and all my resources. Such is the behavior of him in whom I have taken shelter. I'm not capable of describing all this. The holy name of Krishna is independent and thus acts on his own sweet will. In whatever way he becomes happy, that is also my way of happiness. The holy name is the bud of the flower of divine love and is the very abode of astonishing mellows. Such is the power he manifests that when his holy name starts to blossom a little further, it then reveals his own divine form and qualities. Thus my heart is abducted and taken directly to Krishna. Blossoming fully, the flower of the holy name takes me to Vraja and reveals to me his own love dalliance. This name gives me 
This name gives to me my own eternal spiritual body, keeps me right by Krishna's side, and completely destroys everything related to this mortal frame of mine. The name of Krishna is a transcendental touchstone, a mine of all transcendental mellows, all devotional mellows. It is eternally liberated and the embodiment of pure rasa. When all impediments to the pure chanting of the holy name of Krishna are taken, and, taken away and destroyed, then my happiness will know its true awakening. This really gives us a clear idea of what the signs are of the success in chanting the holy name of the Lord. And this is um, the amazing description of how the holy name takes Bhaktivinoda Thakur by the hand and leads him back to his relationship with Krishna and the spiritual world stays by his side. So it reminds me always of the poem by Rupa Goswami in which he says that Krishna and his name are the same. Vacham vachakam deity bhavato. But at then he makes a distinction and he says the holy name is more merciful than Krishna himself because the holy name reveals Krishna even when we've forgotten or when we've uh, been estranged from Krishna the holy name comes and gets us and takes us back just like when we go out for chanting the holy names people who are in complete ignorance Rupa Goswami goes on to say when they hear the holy name it awakens their sense of bhakti even if they're completely blind to the truth, they get a sense that there's something here. Uh, and they have a, an idea. You can see it in their faces. So Bhakti Thakur was the champion of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's message. He revived it when it had been lost. It's so easy to lose things in this world. We were discussing the other day about how bad habits are those that we just fall into. It doesn't take any practice. It just happens. Whereas good habits take practice. And one who wants to have a success in life has to know how to practice. Tat tat karma pravartanat. What are the activities that are recommended by the great souls? And Bhaktivinoda Thakur uh, outlined everything and gave us a, a clear path so that anyone can follow Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and become established as a, uh, an eternal associate of the Lord in the spiritual world by following this method that's passed down through by the great devotees. This is a point also made in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Twayam bujaksha kilasat vadamni samadhi na vesha tchaita saike twat pada potena mahakritena kurvanti govatsa padam bhavabdim. And that is that the uh, great souls like Bhaktivinoda Thakur, they're uh, showing us the path of devotional service. And if we try to follow in their footsteps by taking up the methods they've taught, then uh, the ocean of the material world shrinks down to the size of the water contained with a hoof print of a, within a hoofprint of a calf. How large is that, Madhava? Calf, that's big calf. Calves are like this, right? So maybe just a couple drops of rainwater in there. That's how big the material ocean becomes if one follows the instructions of Bhakti Thakur. So this is the Tirubhava, the disappearance day of Srila Bhakti, Bhakti Vinod Thakur. And on Tirubhava, it's an interesting um, description given by our Acharyas that when the light of our lives, the great teachers, uh, the acharyas who come here and show the way to follow Krishna and they enliven us. There's a way in which when we see them, when we hear from them, uh, even years later from their literatures and so forth, uh, we've, we find uh, within our heart that resonance, uh, resonance with uh, Krishna's instructions and a desire to perform devotional service. They awaken that in us. And uh, when these great souls are walking amongst the people and uh, showing the way by their uh, ordinary, so-called ordinary lives, which are actually extraordinary because although they perform uh, apparently ordinary activities, they go on with their mm, bhakti and exemplary ways to show us by example. 
And when they leave, then it, it's a test for those who have followed how much they have learned. And um, taking advantage of the vani. He reasons ill who say, says that Vaishnavs die for Vaishnavs die to live and living try to spread the holy name around. This is a line from one of Bhaktivinoda Thakur's poems where he says that Vaishnavs never die. They, they die to live because when a Vaishnav dies, they go into the Nitya Lila or they go on to help Lord Chaitanya uh, continue to spread the Sankirtan movement, which is also Nitya Lila. And while they're alive, their main business is to spread Krishna consciousness all over the world. So Bhaktivinoda Thakur um, passed away from the world in um, uh, 19... Uh, wait, sorry. I want to be off by a century. June what? Can't hear you. 1914, yeah. 1914, so it's, it's mentioned in this book about Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. In 1910, Bhaktivinoda Thakur uh, went into a pastime of, of being uh, stunned. He stopped moving. And uh, no one could get him to start moving again. He was like paralyzed. They took him to Calcutta. And many of his detractors then began criticizing him, saying, see, he's an ordinary person. And Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur, his um, son and follower, beseeched him, please stay a little longer so that we can show mercy even to those people who are your detractors. So then Bhaktivinoda Thakur, um, which was sev several months later of being paralyzed, came out of his uh, paralyzed state and began moving around the world again for another several years. He uh, stayed in this world until 1914. So he left in 1914, and in 1915, Gorky Shordas Babaji Maharaj left the world. So Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur was fully dependent on these uh, two great spiritual giants. Uh, I want to read to you a little bit of, of the uh, occurrences, since this is Tirubhav disappearance with Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur after the disappearance of Bhakti Vinod. <coughs> yeah, here it is. Um, some two or three months before his departure during apparent sickness this is pertaining to Srila Gorkishore Das Babaji Maharaj but keep in mind that he left just a year after Bhaktivinoda Thakur so I want us to feel in the mood of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur that um, his uh, spiritual father and his uh, guru uh, both had, had departed and what state was he in? Some two or three months before his departure during apparent sickness, Srila Gorkishore Das Babaji had called Sri Siddhanta Saraswati from Mayapur and instructed it that his samadhi should be established either in Mayapur or Godruma. But if neither of these alternatives were possible, then his body should be dragged by municipal sweepers through the streets of Kulia and finally thrown into the Ganga. But due to the pressure from others, Sri Siddhanta Saraswati was now unable to take the transcendental form of his Guru Maharaj to Mayapur. Nor could he accede to those persons reiterating Babaji Maharaj's words that his form be towed in the streets. In response to their demand, Sri Siddhanta Saraswati stated, My Sri Gurudev, whom Krishna Chandra himself feels privileged to carry on his head and shoulders, spoke such humble words to destroy the arrogance of non-devotees. Even though we are fools, inexperienced, and offenders, we shall not be averse to comprehending, comprehending his actual intent. 
How greatly was Sri Gorasundar embellished by dancing while holding on his lap the spiritually blissful form of Thakur Haridas after his passing. Following in Sriman Mahaprabhu's footsteps, we shall carry the transcendental form of Babaji Maharaj on our heads. The next day, with his own hands, Sri Siddhanta Saraswati dug out and shaped the samadhi on an alluvial bank of the Ganga in Kulia, in the vicinity where Babaji Maharaj had performed much bhajan. The site was owned by the brothers Ananta and Vanamali Podar, prosperous businessmen who had been assisting Srila Saraswati Thakur for some years and were accepted within his circle. Claiming to have donated that property and given up all rights to it, they personally labored and spent money both for establishing the plinth thereat and later for daily services conducted there under Srila Siddhanta Saraswati's direction and for a large annual festival celebrating Babaji Maharaj's Tirobhav. Yet after a few years, Ananta and Vanamali's outlook changed, and they attempted to claim that site in the Transcendental Dham as family property. Ignoring the repeated protest of Sri Siddhanta Saraswati and his followers and sympathizers, the brothers eventually forbade them access to the Samadhi. As a result of these heinous offenses, Ananta and Vanamali soon lost their considerable pelf and underwent acute domestic problems, later losing both the samadhi and the land on which it was situated and being sent to jail for six months. Upon Babaji Maharaj's disappearance, Srila Siddhanta Saraswati inwardly bemoaned, now who will chastise me to make me understand the truth as it is? Having seen many disturbances arise in the Vaishnav community following the Tirubhav of Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur just 16 months before, feeling disappointment and hopelessness and kneeling, knee, uh, keenly suffering the absence of his two muses, Sri Siddhanta Saraswati resolved to keep to himself and desist from speaking Harikata to others. So after the great Acharyas leave the world, there's a way in which there's chaos. Chaos ensues because they leave a, a vacuum. Uh, their spiritual presence is so powerful that it's inevitable when they leave that there's a readjustment period uh, through which uh, the devotees have to endure and somehow go on with the practice of devotional service and carry on the mission. Although he had commented on the eight on eight of the eleven verses of Anuvritti, a further elaboration of Srila Bhaktivinoda's Piyusha Varshini Vritti gloss of Srila Rupa Goswami's Upadeshamrita, which he was composing on Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur's specific order, he ceased working on it. He lamented, To whom will I show my articles and books? Who will take pleasure in my writings and encourage me to continue? Who will take pleasure in hearing about the preaching work and the increasing splendor of the Dham and our service to it? I mean, what's, what's the use if I can't show it to, to my um, mentors? Practically foregoing food and sleep, he remained engaged in intense bhajan while wrestling with a dilemma. His heart reverberated with Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur's order that he not renounce service to Mahaprabhu. And seeing the mass of people spoiling their valuable life, their valuable human life, simply taking birth and then dying without information or, of or interest in the incomparable boons offered by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Sri Siddhanta Saraswati was unceasingly contemplating the need to preach. Yet having experienced the kind of malicious opposition he would have to face for speaking the truth, he was reluctant to return to public life. Then one day a gust of wind blew before him an, ex an extract from Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, wherein Lord Chaitanya instructed Sanatana Goswami to compose transcendental literature, renovate forgotten holy places, institute service to Lord Krishna, and propagate Bhakti Ras. That's what you call a sign. <laughs> Taking this as a divine indication, but feeling depressed and incapable, Sri Siddhanta Saraswati pondered, I have no public support, nor wealth, learning, or the intelligence required to waken interest in the populace. How can I convey to the inhospitable world the pure teachings of Sri Chaitanya and establish the Manobhishta of my gurus? Shortly afterwards, 
One night at the Yoga Peat, in a dreamlike revelation, he saw approaching him from the east the Panchatattva, the six Goswamis of Vrindavan, Srila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, Srila Gorkishor Das Babaji Maharaj, and numerous other great devotees of Lord Chaitanya. So when I read this, I was thinking that's, that's what our altar is, practically. <laughs> so when you look at the altar, that's what Srila Bhakti Siddhanta saw coming to him in his um, hour of prayer. How, should, how can I do this? And Srila Prabhupada said, if you're given an order and you don't know how to do it, then you should pray, how can I do, how can I do, how can I do? So we find that he had no resources. He felt himself com quite incompetent to carry on the teachings of these great acharyas, Bhakti Vinod Thakur, Srila Gorky Das Babaji Maharaj. He was all alone. And uh, he was praying like this. And then he got these signs. Uh, these can enter within one's heart and give one impetus to move forward. So he writes, uh, so they said to him, as he's having this vision, Saraswati, why are you worrying? Begin the task of establishing Shuddha Bhakti. Distribute Gauravani universally. Expand service to Gauranam, Gauradham, and Gaurakam. To what? That's right. With unbreached enthusiasm, broadcast Bhakti Siddhanta. We are eternally with you, ready to help. The support of unlimited people, immeasurable opulence, and boundless scholarship awaits the blessing to serve your mission. That's quite indicative also. When you think about how Prabhupada, in a similar situation, with no resources, came to America, I always consider how, how is it that Pradumna, who ended up as his Sanskrit editor, came forward? Seemingly an ordinary uh, American person, just uh, took up the study of Sanskrit on his own, one day came to Prabhupada and showed him his translations of the Sri Brahma Samhita, and Prabhupada said, keep doing that. Other people came who uh, were fledgling artists, and they flourished, and they began to do artwork. Other kind of management-type people came forward, like His Holiness uh, Gopal Krishna Maharaj. He worked for a big corporation before. He just dropped it and joined Prabhupada. And they all came forward and uh, great wealth. Prabhupada noted that he came, here, came to America with no money, but within several years, he, he was a, a millionaire in all the different currencies of the world, in land and property and, and uh, so many people f spreading the movement. So this uh, great wealth, they're telling him, awaits anyone who will take the, have courage and spread the Christian conscious movement. All will manifest when required. Come forward with full strength to distribute the message of Mahaprabhu's prema dharm throughout the globe. No worldly hindrance or menace will be able to obstruct this undertaking of yours. We are forever with you. Next morning, the few young disciples who had gathered round him saw for the first time in many years his face refulgent in happiness. He related to them the vision he had seen. Before long, he resumed working on Anufriti and thenceforth, his avidity for preaching was fully rekindled and unretractable. So it's not, not that when the guru physically leaves, one's relationship is severed. Rather, that relationship for the sincere disciple goes on, and one can receive instruction either through other god siblings or directly from the guru. And also, constantly from the teachings the Vani, the Guru is left behind. So Bhakti Mino Thakur's transcendental teachings reverberate throughout our movement and throughout the world. His mood of equanimity towards all different spiritual practitioners around the world, but with a special emphasis on following Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uh, very strictly. Uh, he eschewed the various sects that had broken away from the true teachings of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and reestablished what, what the pure teachings were and uh, brought it back to the world stage in such a dramatic way that he's considered to be the seventh Goswami. He was deemed the seventh Goswami by a famous writer of the time who observed, who knew this history of Gaudiya Vaishnavism, had studied the six Goswamis 
and also the the life and teachings of Bhaktivinoda Thakur. So we are the recipients of his mercy. I was uh, at a kirtan in Mayapur, 1975. Prabhupada was walking in the fields, his morning walk. He did it every day. And during those times, you could see for miles in Mayapur because there was only the Chandradaya Mandir and everything else was flat. It was rice fields. So when Prabhupada would go walking in, in the fields with his uh, various other lead, with his leaders, you could see their silhouette walking as the sun was coming up. And we happened to be there, a group of uh, Sankirtan devotees, and we were having a, a kirtan to greet him coming back in before he would greet the deities. Prabhupada stopped and appreciated the international mix of devotees there. And... Uh, Somebody commented, I know they commented because you can hear the recording now. It was being recorded at the time and he's, uh, someone said, Prabhupada, you've brought all these people here just at Bhakti, as Bhaktivinoda Thakur had predicted. Bhaktivinoda Thakur had established the yoga pit, the place of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's appearance in Mayapur and reestablished his teachings, as I've mentioned several times. And then he also predicted that people from various cultures would come together to dance and chant Jai Sachi Nandan in the Holy Dham. So one of Prabhupada's um, uh, disciples who was on the walk said, Prabhupada, you've fulfilled Bhaktivinoda Thakur's uh, prediction and you've brought all these uh, Westerners and Easterners, Europeans. And Prabhupada then commented, he said, yes, and now uh, Bhaktivinoda's mercy will deliver them. And again and again throughout Prabhupada's books, there are compilations of things uh, Srila Prabhupada said about Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur. And uh, th they all have to do with his overseeing uh, all the preachers in the Krishna consciousness movement. He's the powerhouse that's sending down Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's unadulterated message. He conceived uh, of a marketplace that would spread the whole, throughout the whole world so that people would be able to take advantage of this. And uh, Srila Bhaktisiddhanta and uh, Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada actually fleshed this out and made it happen around the world. I can remember being in uh, Berkeley in 1973 at a street festival, and you just like, you, or at the San Francisco Rathiatra. Back in, in those days, there were thousands and thousands of people who would come. You can see the pictures. And um, they were all just dancing in ecstasy at that Rathiatra in 1974. Uh, and, you know, the streets were, were packed with people. Prabhupada got up and danced, and everybody danced with him. So he was carrying that same uh, message of Bhaktivinoda Thakur down to all of us. We're uh, whiling away the time now because we're going to have an offering. It's, um, it's a rarefied crowd tonight because... Um, Many of uh, devotees have been going since uh, last weekend, and uh, we've had festivities every night here, or somewhere in the valley, uh, because of the uh, very special appearance of His Holiness Gopal Krishna Maharaj. Um, I see that Malini, as soon as I said that, popped in through the door. She has her computer halfway open, which means she has some calculations. Are you ready? I have three minutes, though. So, uh, we're going to sing one bhajan. Uh, we'd like to sing a bhajan from Bhaktivinoda Thakur. Any requests? What? Jaya Nilo Premadana Karuna Prachu Jiyani lo premadhana karuna prachu Heno 
प्रभु को तागेला Kahamora swaru prupa, kaha sanata. Kadas ragu nata pati tapavan. Kahamora bhatta juga. Kaha Kavira Eka Kale Kota Gela Gora Natara Pasha ne kuti bo mata anale pashi bo. Goranga gune rani di kota gile pabo. Shishab shangira shange. Jekoilo bila Sheshanga na paya kande narutamodas Sheshanga na paya kande narutamo das Jaya Bhakti Vinod, Bhakti Vinod, Bhakti Vinod, Jaya Bhakti Vinod. Jaya Jaya Prabhupada, 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 Jaya Jaya Prabhupada. We pray to Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur to please bless this entire community as well as the entire community of Vaishnavas around the world. Please empower us and give us strength to follow the, all the tenets of devotional service. Please also empower us to spread the Krishna consciousness movement to all the people um, in the Western world. Please also um, empower us to uh, attract uh, the Western population to come into the Krishna consciousness movement. So just as in Mayapur, those first uh, couple of years 
uh, devotees from all over the world uh, were dancing together in Kirtan. Please, Bhakti Minun Thakur, make that happen again here at Iskand Silicon Valley and then spread all over North America. Thank you for considering our request. Everybody who agrees with the sentiment of this prayer, please say Hare Krishna really loud. <laughs>